Session 20, Deadlifts. Hi, welcome to Session 20 with Kim and Jason and today we're going to go through deadlifts. Why they're a good idea to do them, even as a runner and a few different ways that you can do them even at home without big weights. So Kim, we like deadlifts, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you like deadlifts? I like them because I'm more comfortable doing them for some reason, so different anatomies are just more happy in certain shapes and styles of doing things than other people. I think they're really useful for runners and really useful for everyone, to be honest, but for runners especially, because they hit an area that we often neglect. So. When we're doing strength and conditioning sometimes, we focus on um, the sort of standard squats and things like that, which help work your glutes if you do them properly. But um, our hamstrings get neglected often as runners. There's not many exercises, I think, that many people know um, that they can do at home to work their hamstrings very well. So a deadlift works your whole posterior chain, really. It's really good for your back. It works your glutes if you do it properly. And it definitely hits your hamstrings as well. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really useful one to do. It's one for it's a good one for keeping your back really healthy as well. So even if you're not a runner and you get lower back pain or niggles, it might be because of the way you're standing or sitting, which we've talked about in previous videos, where you might be standing like this with your bum sticking out, puts a lot of load on your lumbar spine. So if you can do things like deadlifts that teach you how to control this area a little bit more day to day and be aware of it then that's going to help support your back so um, a deadlift is quite a technical thing to do but once you get it and you feel it it's quite I think it's quite easy to do as long as you're concentrating when you're doing it so you can do a deadlift with a lot of different things you can do a deadlift with no weight at all um, you can do a deadlift picking something up off the floor like a book or a sock or something um, and if anyone's done, what is it, what do you call it, like health, health and, and safety, safety yeah, yeah, at work stuff, if you have to lift and carry, they teach you how to deadlift basically when you're picking a box up off the floor, that's a deadlift. Um, so, Jason's going to show us how to do it, I'm going to point a few things out as he's doing it, and we're going to use a bit a bar at first, so um, if you've got a bar at home, you might have big plates for it, really large circular ones, we've got quite small plates. So we're going to look at how, how to get in and out of a deadlift, depending on how far you are off the floor as well, because um, that can affect how you do it. So we need to get the bar. Mind your feet. Yep. <laughs> You're going sideways. I'm with you. I'm going to go sideways okay. to start with. So we've got a lovely old rusty bar here. Yeah. Um, before we had the gym, all of this was outside, so there you go. Um, <laughs> But it still weighs the same. If not, it might be a bit heavier with the addition of the rust, I don't know. So, okay. setup's important. Are you going that side? Yeah, I'll come back a bit. There we go. You want to position yourself in the centre of the bar and you want to get your feet underneath the bar, okay? So you want the bar to be roughly um, where you sort of arches in the middle of your foot. That's where it should be over. So uh, uh, the first thing I guess that people do wrong when they're doing deadlifts is they stand away from the bar and then you've got to lean over to pick it up. So when you've got it uh, close to your feet like this, it's right underneath you and so you're forced really to try and think about how to pick it up in a better way. What you're going to do is keeping your back as straight as possible and when I say straight, account for the fact that we've all got a natural curve in our spine so it's not going to be ramrod straight but it's going to feel straight to you. You shouldn't be sticking your bum out and you shouldn't be tucking your bum in. Oh, that's a really hard thing to do, I think, <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, Tuck your bum in. So you're going to crouch down in a squat with your back nice and straight and you're going to put your hands just past hip width apart on the bar and an overhand grip. Right, so you see Jason's really low now and that's because our bar is quite low to the floor. If you're very tall, or if you've got big plates, obviously the bar's going to be a bit higher off the ground. Sorry, if you're very tall, you might want to lift it up to make the ground meet you. So if you've got some blocks or some encyclopedias or something like that, you can put them underneath your plates. Who has encyclopedias now? We do. Google. Them, them old book things that anyway, we Anyway, sorry. So you bend down, 
keeping your back nice and straight. What you don't do, can you demonstrate how to bend down badly and get it? What you don't do is that, where you're just put, going to put a load of load through your spine. You're keeping your legs fairly straight. You want to bend your legs, okay? So let's do it properly. Bend your legs, back nice and flat, face facing the floor, because if you crank your head up, you're compromising your spine. You want to try and think about your spine from here all the way down to here, being as long and as feeling as straight as possible. And then basically you're just going to pull the bar up as close to your legs as you can and driving your hips forward at the top. Okay, that's your deadlift up. That's a nice slow controlled movement. If you drive your hips forward at the top, you, you, need to, you might need to squeeze your bum to feel it working, but you, hold, you squeeze your bum in and you lower it down exactly the same way. So it's really close to your legs all the way down. And then to come out of it, you bend your, sorry, again. <laughs> So what his arms are doing, his arms aren't really doing any work, they're just um, a cable. Your hips, your hamstrings, your glutes should be doing all the work. So you're driving through at the top and basically using your arms as a cable. Can we just talk about shoulders as well? So if yeah. you go back down, so when you're picking the barbell up, you might get into that position and your shoulders might be rounded forward. Um, what you need to do is just reset your shoulders when you get there. So pull your shoulder blades down and back into position so that they feel like they're locked in their sockets. And from there, you've got a much better chance of not just using your arms to power up. Okay? So when you put it down, exactly the same thing. Your knees want to be really bent, depending on how low you are to the floor. And then you can just let go and come up with a nice straight back. So one of those is a standard deadlift. Um, if you're very tall, you might find that quite uncomfortable. Jason's quite far away from the bar at the moment. So if you want to lift the ground up to you, that's one option. If you don't want to do that or you don't have that option, you can do a sumo deadlift. So the way to pick the bar up there, I'll show you with, I'll show you with the bar. <laughs> the way to pick the bar up there is to stand like a sumo wrestler with your feet pointing out and your feet wider apart. And then you're basically going to sumo squat to pick it up. Thank you. So you don't have to have your feet close to the bar. This is just a different way of getting down. It's easier to get down lower without compromising your back and having to bend over like that. So you're going to squat down to pick it up and then pick it up in the same way. From there, you could turn your feet in if that's more comfortable and then just do it in the same way. So put it down again, feet nice and wide. And that just doesn't feel quite as low to the ground. So I know a lot of tall people find that quite difficult. Okay. Um, so that's a full deadlift. A, dead, a style of deadlift that's really useful for runners is a Romanian deadlift. So this is where we don't just do one and put it down and come back up again. We maybe use a lighter weight and we do more reps. So you're going to keep hold of the bar like Jason was to start with. And you're just going to do maybe eight to ten reps. So bent knees, shoulders set in the sockets, back nice and straight, and then pull it up close to your legs. And then when you come down, you're going to come to a point before you can feel your back start to dip and your shoulders start to drop. Usually that's Just turn high to mid shin for most people. So you don't, again, a mistake that people make sometimes is to try and get all the way to the floor. You don't need to do that. You'll probably feel it more in your hamstrings if you keep it high. So Jason's going to few inches, a couple of inches below his knees. If he went any lower than that, I suspect his shoulders would start to come forward and he would start to lose. It's that, yeah. That bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's there. You can see. I don't know if you can. You should be able to see. When, when he goes a bit too low, his shoulders do that instead of staying in socket. So I guess it's when gravity takes over a bit, isn't it? So if you were to do three lots of eight to ten Romanian deadlifts like this, nice and slow, driving your hips at the top, Go into high to mid shin, depending on how long your legs and arms are. And just bringing it back up before your shoulders start to come forward. That's really going to build some endurance in your hamstrings. And it gives them a nice stretch as well, I yeah, think. It gives definitely. them a really nice stretch and work. Sometimes when you get tight or sore hamstrings, it's because you're not working them enough. It's not because they're necessarily overused. It's just because they're not doing enough work and then you're running yeah. and you're overworking lazy so hamstrings. If you do get tight hamstrings when you are running, especially long distances, then 
doing something like this is going to strengthen them and it will help. Mm. Um, it did make it, uh, it's something I started to do. I used to get tight hamstrings. That was the first thing that went on a long run. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a lot of work on hamstring strength and it's been absolutely fine since then. So, yeah, yeah. worth doing. It's also, if you can start to be more aware of where your shoulders are in space when you're doing things like this, it can change how you move just in everyday life as well. If you're thinking, actually, I'm going to bend down to pick that thing up and just do that. Instead of just doing that, you can think more, I'm going to do this and I'm going to keep my shoulders nice and straight. Um, it's just going to help with your posture and your body awareness. Yeah. So you don't need a bar to do deadlifts. Um, if you've got dumbbells, you can do it with rusty dumbbells as well. So it's the same principle. When you pick them up off the floor, you do it in the same way. Just to protect your back, even if they're quite light, be, just be mindful of how you're picking them up. And then you can just do exactly the same thing, but with dumbbells. The heavier you go with deadlifts, the better, in my opinion, but don't do it unless you're absolutely certain that you're feeling the technique right. Mm. Someone's maybe watched you do it. Um, it's worth spending more time doing going, the lightweight and yeah. perfecting the form rather than going too heavy too soon and not getting your form quite right because yeah. they are, like Kim said before, they are technical um, and if you're not sure, get somebody to have a look at you. It's worth maybe even having, you know, having a session with a, a PT or someone if you're not sure that you're feeling it right or something like that, or something's tweaking. Just go and see someone, ask someone that knows to watch you do it because it's probably just a little thing that needs working out. Or send us a video and yeah. we'll have a look. <laughs> yeah. Um, we get that quite a lot, so yeah, we'd happily have a look. So you can do it with kettlebell as well. Kettlebells are quite good because they're quite, they've got the handle nice and high already to the ground, so they're nice and easy to pick up. And it's just the same thing, you're just lowering it to about mid shin and then squeezing at the top. Just gives you a narrower grip, that's all. Um, one thing, if you do start going a bit heavier and your grip's getting compromised, that's something I find really difficult when I'm doing heavy ones, is that my fingers just start to want to fall away from the bar. Um, you can work on grip strength, but you can also get little straps as gloves well. Gloves or straps. Or gloves, but yeah. you're going quite heavy, I think, yeah. by the time you get to that point. So, yeah. Um, the other thing is footwear. Um, depending... I. Ideally, it's nice to have bare feet because you get a really good feel for the ground um, or like a minimal shoe. Uh, but then some, if you, if you do struggle to get down quite a long way, then a trainer with a higher or more stable heel can help as well. Yeah. Um, so whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, but yeah, if you do go bare feet, mind your toes. Because <laughs> um, that would be... Uncomfortable. Yeah, it would with the kettlebell. Um, but yeah, we like doing them in bare feet or sort of minimal shoes. Um, one last variation on a deadlift is a single leg deadlift. So this is something that hits the same areas but also helps with your um, stability and balance. So again, you don't need to do these with a weight. Oh, oh you're going um, going quite heavy there. <laughs> <laughs> and you could. I wouldn't try and do these with a bar, but if you can do it with a dumbbell or a kettlebell or just no weight at all while well, you get the form and the technique. Um, not as important if you're not using weight to get the technique actually bang on, especially when you're balancing, but it's exactly the same principle. You're hinging at your hips, keeping your back nice and level all the way down, keeping your knee that you're standing on nicely bent and soft. That way you'll actually hit the sort of belly of the hamstring a little bit more. It's almost like a pendulum, but with control rather than just swinging back and forth. He's struggling for balance as well. It's, it's fine to use a chair um, just to help get the technique right. The other thing as well is to try and keep your hips level. So, um, oh, blimey, ah. you, you don't want to be, we'll swap sides. You don't want to be twisting in your hips to try and get your leg really high or anything like that. It yes, doesn't really, not yeah. Keep your hips nice and square. It doesn't really matter. My back leg, when I do this, it just stays quite bent just because it feels a bit more stable. So you can try and get it straight, but it doesn't really matter what that back leg's doing as long as the hip is staying nice and square. Oh, 
quite tight on that side today. This is quite a telling one. It's good. It's a nice little warm up to do your actual yeah. deadlifts. Yeah, I do it as a warm up before deadlifts mm. or kettlebell swings or something like that. Or if you're doing a session where you're feeling a bit meh and you don't really want to do anything heavy, they're a good a good exercise. You feel these in your glutes as well, I think. Yeah. Especially if you add a bit of weight. Yeah. Um. So that yeah, they're nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's everything for today. See how you get on. Let us know how it goes. And um, thank you for watching. Please, please, please subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and you want to see more. And um, we'll see you next time. Cheers.